Hey, hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Fireball with Ashley Mayfield. If you appreciate videos just like this, make sure you hit subscribe and share it with a friend. Now, buckle up and brace for impact. Welcome back, where today we are gonna dive in and just be grateful for who God has designed you to be, as I'm gonna be grateful for who God has designed me to be. Have you ever been trapped in the comparison game? Like comparison just brings you so much unhappiness. It's so evil. And it's so easy to lean into that, especially in a world of social media that we live in. And so one of the things that I find is uh, a couple weeks ago, I asked on my Instagram, follow me at the Ashley Mayfield on Facebook, on Instagram, on all my social medias. But I asked on my Instagram stories, ask me anything. And someone said, how do you stay so positive? How, he's like, you're always so positive. And I was like, oh, oh, contraire, sister. I am actually not a very positive person. I'm not very optimistic. I'm very much a real, realistic person. And so I lean into realism and I have the hope of being better, but I call it like it is. And uh, I, I've had to learn how to be so grateful for who God has called me to be, how God has made me, how God has designed me to be. And it's so easy for us to look to the left or the right. And I provide so much in my YouTube videos and on my podcast about learning to clap for her, that success isn't limited, that your sister winning does not rob you from winning, that you don't have to hold it all together because when you open your hands and you give it all away, no secrets, no strings attached, God can fill your place up with more. I was reminded this past weekend how grateful I am that God made me me. And I just want to share that story with you real quick. So this is going to be a little bit shorter of an episode, but I hope that my testimony, I hope that my story can inspire you to continue to lean into who God has made you to be. You see, it's so easy for us to look to the left or the right and look at people who are winning. They're in their lane and they're winning. And we say, what am I missing? And then we want to start embodying them. We want to start embodying them gift, their gifts. And then we wonder why we feel like an imposter because we were never called to carry uh, that gift. We were never called to carry that burden that your sister has, right? And so this past weekend, we had uh, a company, one of the companies that I work for, we had our annual conference. And because of COVID, we weren't all able to meet where we normally met. And so uh, it was a really exciting experience for me. Normally I'm pulled in a million different directions. I have to be all these things to all these other people. And I don't get a chance to show up for my team. And so this was something that I actually uh, held near and dear to my heart. I was asked to go and speak and pour into other people. And I didn't even open up the messages. I said no, because I wanted to show up for my people because I know who God has made me to be. And I'm an amazing leader. I have incredible vision and amazing passion. And I know how to pull people together and I know how to inspire people. And I was ready to use my gifting for my ladies that traveled uh, all over the United States to come into the house. So we rented out this mansion together and we showed up and we had this incredible first night. We, I mean, I kind of like punched them between the eyes. We got raw, real. We ripped off the band-aids. We talked about letting go and uh, letting go of these identities, letting go of these labels, these names, these things that we've held on to our pain. And um, and then uh, we gave ourselves permission to move forward. And then we leaned into our imagination. If you want to have success on any level, you have to let go and break up with your memory you have to lean into your imagination, right? And a lot of times we're holding ourselves back from success because uh, we're just not leaned into our imagination. We're holding down almost like weights around our ankles of all of our memories and all the reasons why we shouldn't. So I was a little nervous going into this past weekend. Uh, obviously, I felt a little bit of pressure, felt like I had to perform. I wanted everyone to enjoy it, right? I wanted everyone to have a good time. And uh, and I trust they did. I walked away from the event and just said, hey, one person cried, one person opened up, one person thanked me. That was a win, right? Regardless of what happened, that was a huge win for me. And I definitely patted myself on the back. But I had a moment of appreciation of how much I've grown. I've had a moment of appreciation that I don't have to be the loudest one in the room, that it doesn't always have to be camera on me. 
I get to share my stage and my platform and I get to be a facilitator. And that is something that I leaned into so much this past weekend. So uh, when we first got there, we opened it up. We had this powerful night, like I said. But then the next day, I got to pass the baton to two of my leaders and they came and they spoke about uh, stuff that was very near and dear to my heart. You know, I'm not a person that's typically driven by community, but I need community, right? It's not my passion, but I know that I need to participate in it. And then I had a leader that spoke on leadership, which is like through and through that runs through my veins. And it was so cool for me to sit there as a student, right? Not in my ego, not in my emotions, not in, oh my gosh, they got a better response than me. Oh my gosh, people are opening up. Oh my gosh, no one told me, you know, that they were proud of what I said, but they're telling them. And it was so easy, which yes, people did tell me I was proud. They were proud of me. Okay. Uh, after the fact, but in that moment, it's so easy of us, regardless if it's a boss, a friend, someone in our family, maybe you have a cousin that's excelling, maybe it's in your entrepreneurial business and you've got someone beside you, beneath you, above you, that is just excelling and you see them step into their gift and you see them step into their power and you're just like, God, what am I lacking? What's wrong with me? And what was really cool is I had this huge epiphany. Uh, one of my best friends was there and she was speaking on community and she is someone that is so passionate about community. It's like why God has designed her. It just runs through her veins. Well, that's not my gift. And it could be easy. It could be easy for me to want to lean in and compare my gift to her gift. Well, why, why am I not passionate about people? Why am I not this? Why am I not that? Why do, why does she move people more? Why do people like her more? Why does it like for me to play these or, and those are all irrational thoughts. Like none of that is true, right? But it's easy for me to start cultivating if I'm not grateful for who I am and how God has designed me to be, right? I am not called to have this gift of community. I am not called to be someone that stands on a platform and says, this is why you need community. And I'm gonna give a dissertation on all the ways that it's gonna change your life. But what I was called to do is I was a facilitator this past weekend. And that was pretty freaking cool. And I realized because I'm grateful for who I am and I know who God has called Ashley Mayfield to be, I was able to set a foundation and set a stage so my best friend can go and thrive in her gift. And when you, sister, I'm telling you, if you get nothing, when you lean in to your gift and who God has called you to be, and you're grateful for that, you realize that the, their gifts do not outshine your gifts. And sometimes they can't have a gift. They can't accelerate in their gift without your gift, right? And I was able to lay this incredible foundation for my friends to come and for both of them to speak this passion that they have on the inside of them. And in no way did it rob from me. In no way did it dim my light. If anything, it made my light shine brighter because we were winning together. And so it was this incredible time. And I realized like, I don't have to be the loudest person in the room. I don't have to always hold the microphone. I don't have to keep it all and hoard it close to my chest. Like I get to give freely. I get to pour into people and I get to do it without reserve. Because at the end of the day, my friend, I can tell you exactly how to make a cake and Hefa, you never gonna make the cake like I make it, right? Because that's my sauce. It's my secret sauce. I am my secret sauce. It's my passion. It's my vision. It's my energy. It's my charisma. It's my ability to show up unapologetically me. It's that I don't need to look like you. I don't need to talk like you. I don't need to walk like you. I get to just be me and I'm gonna lean into that every chance that I get. That's what makes me me. I can tell you how to teach and preach and speak every single word that I say, and you still won't do it like me. And when you have that confidence and when you walk in that attitude, knowing and being grateful for exactly, you might not, you might not be the best speaker, but that doesn't mean that you get to look at me. Maybe you're a better listener than I am, right? Maybe you move faster. Maybe things come quicker to you. Maybe you're detail oriented. Uh, maybe you just know how to make people feel good. Sister, you have a gift. And when you learn to discover that gift, decide that gift, discover that gift and lean into that gift, I'm telling you, all this competitiveness almost falls to the wayside. It almost falls to the wayside. The woman who's hustling and the woman who's hating, they don't speak the same language, okay? Successful women want other women to be successful. Hear me. 
And so if you're sitting back and you find yourself in the space where you're comparing and you're hating and you're jealous and you're saying, I'm so jealous of her, I'm so envious. No, 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 sis, you're coming from a wrong place. You need to be grateful for who you are. And you can take on characteristics of someone else, but you will never be them. You are called to be you. And I was reminded so much of that this weekend of how much I've grown. And I come to you and I am so proud of myself. And I'm going to brag on myself for a second because it felt so good to know that I could see other women elevated, other women that have skills and giftings and passions that I wish I could exude, but I don't. And that's okay because I'm enough just as I am. And if you're struggling with any of that today, my friend, or you know someone that is, I want you to share this with them. You are enough just as you are. You get to lean into who God has called you to be. You get to lean into your specific giftings, desires, and it might look different. And sometimes we get so afraid because it's going to look different. And maybe you have to be the first. Maybe God is calling you to expand and expound your gifting because you're going to be the first and you're going to pave the way for women that come after you. But you get to do it and you get to lean in and you get to be excited about it, whether you're reserved or you're loud, whether you like the front of uh, the scenes or behind the scenes, whether you're passionate about people or not. You are uniquely wired and just be you. Understand, believe, and know that her success does not take from yours, that you get to clap for her for crossing her finish line while you're in the midst of your journey, that you might not fully understand and articulate what it is that you're called to do and where it is that you wanna go, but trust the process, trust your process, that if you'll just continue to lean in and be grateful for who you are called to be, every step you take and every brick you lay, it's going to get more and more, uh, you'll discover more and more clarity around all that God has for you. And so I want to challenge you as you start uh, today, whatever day you're listening, and you, and you go into this year and you start seeing the wins and the victories around you, don't get so caught up in that. Continue to lean in to who you are, your unique divine fingerprint. What is that? You get to be grateful for that. You do not have to lean into a personality test. You do not have to lean into what your mom and dad has always said about you. You do not get to do success the way that other people do success. It's going to be you. It's going to be special and it's going to be unique and it is going to make an impact and an influence if you'll let it. But are you grateful? Are you grateful for the giftings that you have? Are you grateful for the quirks in your personality? Uh, it's easy for me to want to sit back and say, uh, you know, the, the irrational thought, I can't be as successful as I want because I'm not a very logical person. Well, first off, I am a very logical person. Second off, I might not be driven by books. I might not be driven uh, by being book smart. Excuse me, I love reading, but I might not be driven by being book smart. I might not have a bachelor's degree. That does not make me unqualified to stand on a stage and speak to over 10,000 people. That does not dismiss the experiences that I've had in my life. And I get to be grateful for that. I get to be grateful that God has not called me to go and get a degree. I get to be grateful that I don't have to come from a place of reason. I can come from a place of heart. And sister, if you're there today and maybe you're questioning yourself, maybe you're doubting, maybe you don't even know who you are yet, that's okay. Be grateful for what you know. And I want to challenge you today. This is your homework. I know, but this is how I'm going to roll today. You get to write down 10 things you love about yourself. What are 10 things about your personality? What are 10 things that you stand for, that you embody, that no matter what anyone says about you, you know that they are true, fact, solid, put them in writing. They're the 10 commandments, baby, for your life. What are those 10 things that you love about yourself and you know them to be true and it makes you so special? I want you to write them down and I want you to speak life over that and I want you to remember that. Lean in and be grateful for who God has called you to be. And I promise you, the more you lean into your specific giftings, you're going to be able to appreciate those who have opposing giftings around you. So I hope you found value in this. Share this with someone that just needs to hear it's okay to be you. You have permission to be you and be grateful for you. But until next time, know that I love you. I'm rooting for you and I believe in you, my friend. Talk to you soon. Bye.